it'll be quick in and out with this one. It seems like the longer I look at it, the more the Holy Spirit is telling me stay in it. So we're staying in it a little longer today, and we're staying in chapter 2. Um, perhaps we will finish chapter 2 today, um, but there's so much to see right here in this book of Habakkuk, right in the Old Testament, one of the minor prophets, but he is not minoring on the word of the Lord to us today. So let's get in there. Chapter 2 of the book of Habakkuk, and we're going to take a look at that. Um, and today I want to focus specifically on just one verse, and that is verse 14. Verse 14. It's a great verse. I was so excited when we stopped for a while and, and participated in the National Day of Prayer that this was their key verse. And it just struck in my heart that God wants to say something to us as a nation, to us as a people of God scattered throughout the earth, he wants to say something about his glory filling the earth. The, the verse reads in the New American Standard, For the earth will be filled with a knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now chapter 2 is interesting because I've spoken about this a few weeks ago that it contains five warnings as I've looked at those warnings I have found that they apply to us a lot more clearly than I first thought why well, isn't that the way the Holy Spirit works we first look at something we think oh that that that's just for someone else but as I looked at it I, I found that these are direct instructions and it's the word of the Lord to us and not that I'm going to unpack them directly today, but I want to go through them very quickly um, to show what God is saying. So you read, read this chapter again. You'll read these five woes or warnings. And I have written my notes, read them and weep, because that is, that is the result. That is the response. Don't, don't read them and get angry. Read them with a repentant heart. It's easy to apply things that we read in God's Word to another. Say, I wish somebody else would read this book. But actually, the Holy Spirit has us reading this book. So the five warnings in this chapter. The first warning goes to what may be summarized as political scheming, corrupt political scheming. And we know there's a lot of that going on in our day. And I don't want to get bogged down with that, but we know that it's happening and we as God's people need to not partake of this or be part of it. Political deals that are made at the expense of the people. And we need to rebuke this. We need to reject this. We need to speak against this and pray against this happening in our land or wherever it is happening. Because God is not pleased with our leaders when they make corrupt deals at the expense of people. Then there's corrupt business um, dealings where the big and the powerful perhaps squeeze out the, the, the small. And God is not happy when there is the abuse of power because there's money, there's structure, there's size. God is not happy with this either. And so we should stand over and say, God, help us to root out this corruption in our day. And then there's, thirdly, there's the corruption where labor is abused and used in many ways. And it's not just a, a matter of, of a few things here or there or minimum wage or whatever. It's bigger and greater than that. But God is not pleased when people are forced to work for little or nothing. These things God is not pleased about. And then there's, and then the fourth one is an interesting one because it is a whole woe we spent on the corruption that is brought on by the abuse of alcohol. I found that very interesting. You'll have to go and read it to see exactly. But I believe that it's very clear that God has something to say about this, the use and abuse of alcohol. I am firm in the matter that I think that that believers 
should abstain. You can check the word of God. You may not agree and don't turn it off right now because you disagree. Go and read Habakkuk. Find out what the word of the Lord says here and let the Holy Spirit apply it to your heart. Don't be so quick to jump out. But drunkenness is the, the major thing there. There was, you know, there was a drunken party in the Bible, and it's right at this time, right in the time when Habakkuk was writing, there was a drunken party that was going on. King Nebuchadnezzar was having himself one big party. And during this party, some writing appeared on the wall, writing that no one could read. But Daniel was able to interpret it. And finally, when he was asked, well, what, what does this say? What is it saying? It said, basically, the interpretation was, you have been weighed and found wanting. You see, when there, there is there's a corruption going on in the earth that, that leaves us weighed but wanting. Um, people, they live in a time when people drown themselves, they puff, they pop. All their problems away it's time for us to come to God with a sober heart and mind and be ready to hear and he alone is the one to whom we bring our problems because only there will we actually find solutions not in ways that that settle our anxieties if you're anxious come to the Lord he will help you with all your anxieties. You see, finally, there is the, the empty idols, the worship of gods that cannot answer, the worship of things that have no voice, have no ears, have no power, power to do anything. You see, there's also in this a warning against empty, false religion that has no power to do anything. And I believe in here is a warning to us as a church that we be not a powerless people, but that we be a people with a breath of God filled with the Spirit of God and that we will move in the power of God's Holy Spirit and that that is where we will stand. We will not be just a structure, just a, a form that is denied the power of God in us. So these warnings, you can have a look at them. They are there. But you see, there's, there's things that happen in, in the church world and in the earth today, and I believe that God is speaking to us about them. I know that, that among these, there will be two groups of people that will look at these five warnings, and there will be the legalists and saying, well, let's stop everything. Do nothing, or only do it this way. And then there will be those who are open for license and they'll say we can do everything it doesn't matter i believe that god is speaking to both of those it is not for the legalist to hold on and say well let's put restrictions down it's not for those who have liberty to say well we can do anything because god is calling us to holiness because either license or legalism it doesn't matter which one they will both kill us they will destroy the word of god in our lives they will they will remove the power of god from our lives and so we need to come to holiness not legalism legalism will kill but license a liberty that has gone too far will kill as well what we need is the voice of the lord calling us to him in holiness if you can hear that today, just let the Holy Spirit speak it into your hearts. You see, repentance, or repent is a New Testament word, not just an Old Testament word. It doesn't just belong somewhere else, but it is a word that, that we need to use and we need to be aware of because repentance awakens the soul, it awakens the spirit because it, repentance brings times of refreshing. And boy, we need times of refreshing. Now in the time of, of this COVID-19 and all, all the lockdown that in some places he's still carrying on, we're saying, yes, what we need more than anything else is an awakening. We need the Spirit of God to come to us. We need to see and hear and be part of a move of God in the earth. 
but if we're stuck in legalism, we will not see it. If, we, if we're so far on the other side that we, that we allow ourselves to do anything and everything, neither will we see it because we need to come to God, separate ourselves and turn away from the things that displease God, and we need to turn toward a holy God. So among all these warnings, we, right here in the middle of this chapter, this warning going on, most of the chapter, but in verse 14, the verse that we're going to focus on today, it's surrounded by warnings and woes and all the things that God opposes. And we find this gem of a scripture right there. See, it, it, it's interesting that this verse brings a contrast because we looked at a couple of weeks ago 2 verse 4 that also brought a contrast of the things that were going on and this verse does exactly the same 2 verse 14 for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea this is a powerful contrast the earth will, is filled with all kinds of iniquity, all kinds of wickedness, injustice, abuse of power, and a departure from God. And then boom, right here, right in the middle of all of those things, those hard sayings, those tough things, God inserts this piece of hope, this wedge of hope comes right in here, and God begins to speak hope to a prophet who may have become quite hopeless in being surrounded by all the warnings, being surrounded by all the things that were wrong and that God was going to judge, God inserts this ray of hope. Aren't you excited when God puts some hope in? You can look around you and you can see despair, you can see carnage, you can see trouble everywhere. But what happens is God is inserting a ray of hope into every one of us. And I, I trust that we will hear what God is saying today. He says, for the earth shall, will, there's a certainty here. There's a certainty of statement. This is going to happen. This is not something that maybe, someday, somehow. No, there's a certainty that, is, that God is saying, the earth shall, the earth will be filled. Can you hear God, the certainty in God's voice? The earth shall be filled. That's a good thing. That being filled means completely covered, leaving nothing untouched. God, When God does something, He does a complete work. He doesn't just um, come in and do half measures. You know, sometimes we'll give it our best and we'll give up long before it's done perfectly. But God can do nothing without doing it with excellence and without doing it completely. So when God does something, he says, For the earth shall be filled, completely covered, and nothing untouched, with a knowledge. And this knowledge here is an intimate knowledge, something that comes only by experience. I believe that God is, is about to show the earth who he is and they will know him by experience. Now certainly that doesn't mean we would hope it to be so that everyone would, would see and know God and accept him, accept what he is offering. But that may not be the case. But all the earth will know, will come to this knowledge. See, this is a knowledge that comes by relationship. Ephesians 4.13 says that until we attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. There's a time coming there where we will, we will come to know the Son of God. We will know Him as we haven't known Him before. We'll come to a mature man to the measure, that's a great word, measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. If there's, if there's one comparison that we need to, to have in our life, it's not that I compare myself to you or that you compare yourself to another, 
but is that we compare ourselves to Christ. Because in the, in the balance, in the, in the scales where we are being weighed, we will be weighed by this measure, by no other measure, but this measure. And knowledge here means that to, to ascertain through or by seeing. So it's a great thing that God wants to do. He wants to allow us to see knowledge that is based on vision. See, Habakkuk, he had a vision. He saw the Lord. I pray that today you would see God, that you would have a vision of God, that he would come and that you would see him in your spirit, that you would see him in your soul, that you would, that you would get a glimpse of him, that when you read the word of God, you will see him right there in his word. Because that ability, that gift of seeing God will give you an intimate knowledge of who he is. Build something in you. When you read the word, ask God. Say, God, I want to see you in this verse. I want to see you in this chapter. I want to see you in this book. Ephesians 1.18 goes on and says, As I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So there's a, that when our eyes are enlightened, when we can see, then we will know. So I pray that God will help us to see, because then we will know. For the earth shall be filled with a knowledge, not just knowledge. Knowledge is a dangerous thing. The earth is filled with knowledge. And that knowledge has made people proud. It has made people turn away from God. What we need is not just knowledge. Knowledge is good. But what the earth needs is the knowledge of the glory. Knowledge of the glory of God. To see this, to know this. The Hebrew word for glory is an interesting word. And it means weight or splendor to be heavy it has that that idea of something that, that that has substance and weight to it see we can get very busy in in church circles and in in places and we look at something that that's happening on and you know we look at roll calls we count heads but god doesn't want us to count heads he wants us to weigh lives god doesn't just want to say to hear us say you know count me in here i am but god wants to have us come in in a weighty way that we come in and that we're all in we're not just in in part but when we come in we're not found wanting. We come in all the way. You see, it's easy to, to, to look and check roll calls. How many people are present? How many people come? You know, when we gather in the building, we want to see how many people were in that meeting at a time. And when we're, when we're on Facebook, we want to see how many people actually came and, and, and watched the, the message that morning. And we look at those. But... It's really more important for us to understand that God doesn't look at those numbers. God is looking and saying he's weighing men's hearts. And he's saying, is there some substance to this? God wants us to be people of substance. You see, Nebuchadnezzar was found, was weighed, but he was found wanting. It's like, I don't want to be found wanting. And God measures, weighs this man. I want him to, to measure and find that I not only measure up by, through my own, that I do not measure up through my own efforts. Of course, that is true. But that I, that I measure, I come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that I not found wanting there. And that is a work of God's power in me 
see there's been a trend in stores over the last number of years I've I've seen it as we go by what happens is they make the packages smaller and smaller um, but keep the price the same have you noticed the same well you know I everybody who knows me knows that I notice this first with ice cream but they do it with all kinds of things peanut butter cereal it goes on the boxes get smaller and thinner and and the content gets less bags of chips are more air than they are actually chips but they still as big what's going on they now long no longer have the same weight to them the same substance but they have the same look God doesn't want us to be a people that have the same look that we have that we have a representation of something but our substance is lacking no we need to come to the Lord and the substance that we present is not of our own doing but it is of the work of God in us he is working in his church he is working in his people you see God measures us by weight but not and not by number the measure is the fullness of the stature of Christ for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord the glory of the Lord the weight of the God's glory is substantial amen it is what is real there is no substitute for it God's glory is his holiness on display we know that God is holy right you read in the scripture that that God is holy in, in Revelation we read how the the angels cry holy we see in in the scripture that it's spoken of that God is holy but God's holiness expressed in the earth will often be seen as his glory it'll be seen as his power and display for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord and it's it's a covering it's a as the waters cover the sea we should expect the glory of God to cover the earth this is a hope that is there we can look at the pandemic we can look at the lockdown or stay-at-home orders but I believe that God is bringing forth a people who will who will express the glory of the Lord in such a way that it will cover the earth that will fill the earth and that will fill up that word fill means actually or cover means to fill up the hollows to fill up all those places that are empty God wants to fill them all the glory of the Lord will cover the earth it will not it will not be just here or there but every part of the earth shall experience the glory of the Lord I ask you a question today what covers you what covers you Adam and Eve made for themselves covers in the Garden of Eden something had to cover them but what covers you you can only cover your sin I can only cover my sin for so long and then my sin will uncover me can I say that again I can only my sin can only cover me for so long and then it will uncover me and it will expose me it will ex expose us but we have to let the word of God let the glory of God be the one the thing that covers us let it be Christ that we put on the Lord Jesus Christ that he is the one that covers us now I love this promise that we have here in Habakkuk um, 2 14 for the glory for the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea but we cannot have this promise without heeding the warnings that surround it we can't just pluck it from its context and say I'll take that promise but what God is saying leads to that promise has to be heeded we cannot have the promise until we acknowledge the promise the problem 
and that we turn away from our false and corrupt structures. The things that hold us back, that bring corruption to our hearts and minds. So Habakkuk 2.14 stands in total contrast to the preceding verses. To everything else just about in this chapter, this verse stands in contrast. Unlike the world systems, unlike Babylon in the time of, of Habakkuk, unlike the world structures in our day, and, and if you look, the Bible still t speaks of them as Babylonian in, in structure and kind, but the world's methods, in amidst all this, God is establishing kingdom for himself. And he's establishing, Hebrews 1 verse 8 says, but, the, but of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. I love the way the Word of God sort of goes and doubles up on that. Forever and ever. And the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. God is establishing kingdom that is forever and it's built on righteousness. Isaiah 11 verse 9 makes a similar statement to Habakkuk 2.14, it says, For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There is a time coming, and I believe is now when, when we're going to see a new, a great awakening. We're going to see, as some say, a reformation in the earth. Where we're going to see that God is going to take the structures, and I believe that he's starting with the church. He's taking the structures of religion and he is filling and he's breaking those apart and he's breaking them away from us so that they will not become hindrances to his work. And he is setting us free by the power of his Holy Spirit that in the earth again there will be seen the kingdom of God raised as a kingdom of light and of power. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44 writes and then he's saying yeah in the days of those kings and he's speaking there of of a certain powers he says the god of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed and that kingdom will not be left for another people it will crush and put an end to these kingdoms the kingdoms of the earth but itself but it will itself endure forever. There is hope. God is building a kingdom that will not be silenced, will not be shut down, will not be relegated to some corner of the earth, but will fill the entire earth. I find courage in this because I know that these are great times that we're living in. God is speaking, but we must heed the warnings we must deal with a problem so that we can possess the promise. We have to address the problem so that we can possess the promise of God. Revelation eleven fifteen goes on to encourage us further. It says, the kingdom of of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he will reign forever and ever and I love this that it's not put in some kind of future tense it is spoken of right now it's spoken of happening right now and you love it when you when you turn on the news and you're watching and they says breaking story happening now tell you there's a breaking story happening now the kingdom of God is rising in the earth for the earth is to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord the kingdoms and rulers of the world will be purged they will be judged it is important for us to understand that when that we come and God has has come to us by his grace and his mercy and he's put us on the scales he is weighing us right now and let us not be found wanting but let us repent let us turn to him so that we will be filled with his glory 
that we will be part of what he's doing in the earth, that we will not be part of these structures that will be relegated to nothing, but we will be part of God's kingdom that will fill the earth. We are part of God's glory, the knowledge of his glory that will fill the earth. See, all around this verse, there's these judgment statements against corruption. We see that the prophet found himself in a place of listening to this, as I would have, and I'm sure as you would. Just turn on the news and you hear all the, the, the horrid news of this is going on and that's happening there and so many people are dying and, and there's shortage here and trouble there. We, we see this, we hear it, and the first thing that our hearts can, can do is to be overwhelmed with bad news. The prophet was right there, overwhelmed with this terrible news, and God inserts this word of hope. God is doing something in the land. You see, there are those who, who work and toil for nothing. Look at Habakkuk 2 verse 13. You're going to see all the work, all their toil, all their labor, everything they, they put effort to will come to nothing. And then he comes to verse 14. Something powerful is going to happen. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, even as the waters cover the sea. The prophet could have lost hope, but he didn't. We could lose hope in our day as we see the destruction happening in earth, but we shouldn't. Unfortunately, there are those who, who look around and they see, um, all they can see is evil rise. All they can see is, is the work of the enemy. All they can see is the work of Antichrist in the earth. I tell you, there is something greater to see. There is a wedge of hope. There is a ray of hope inserted right in the midst of all of the trouble that God is at work. But we have to deal with the problem before we can get to the promise. See, Habakkuk sees in the realm of all of this destruction and all this trouble, he sees the spirit open wide and he begins to see things differently he sees something that he couldn't see before he sees the lord of the whole earth he sees god in power he sees he sees the one who sees the end and the beginning who sees it all from start to finish he sees the promise of God in the presence of the problem. And we have, to, we have to get new eyes to see differently. We have to get eyes that will see what God is telling us needs to be seen. Because this, this as I said before, that when we, when we get the right vision, when we can see, when our eyes are enlightened, and then we will see God, not the problem. We'll be raised and lifted above it. Habakkuk 2.14 says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That's the King James Version. But listen to the Living Bible. It says, The time will come when the earth is filled as the waters full of fill the sea. And with an awareness of the glory of the Lord. There is a promise of revival, an awakening, a revolution. This is what earth needs. This is what I need. This is, I trust and I prophesy this is what you, this is what we all need in this day. This is what we're believing for. This is what every heart is crying for. We may not know what we're crying for, but we're crying, God, would you do something in our day? Would you do something in our lifetime? And I believe that God is doing it if we will call on him. Yes, this is what we are here for. We are here exactly for this day. Now, Pastor 
Roselle, as always said, for those who know him, say that glory is the visible manifestation of the character and nature of God. It's the way that God reveals exactly who he is to us. And Tim Keller says that the glory is the public infinite display of the beauty and worth of God, the radiance of his holiness. God wants to come and he wants to show himself in character, his beauty, his qualities. He wants to show those forth, but he wants them to be instilled in his people. And we have no power to just go and, and take take the, the fruit of the Spirit and attach them to our lives. We have to let the Holy Spirit grow them in us. We have, to, And they only grow in the presence of God. They only grow by the power of God. See, we can't add to God's glory, but we can be a window. We can be the projector. We can be the instrument that makes God's holiness visible in the earth, that they will see him, that they will know him. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 says, And one called out to another and said, These are the angels, these are the seraphim, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts. And what's the result? When God's holiness is heard and proclaimed in the earth, the whole earth is full of His glory. And so they live in, in, his, in the presence of His holiness and we experience, we live in the presence of His glory. When the holiness of God is revealed in the earth, we will observe it as His glory. We'll experience it as His glory. I believe that God is, is getting ready to reveal Himself in the earth. He's not, he's not just going to, He's not raising up people just so that there will be another group of people, that there will be another movement. But the movement that God wants to do, and every time He's done it, is that he becomes visible in the earth, that he becomes clear. And God is raising up people that will show forth his glory, and that will declare his glory, and that God's glory will be seen in the earth. See, the pure character and nature of God will be revealed in his people once again. But the removal of all things that have been corrupted and that are corrupt needs to take place. We need to heed those warnings because in the body of Christ we need to be purged of the things that are not of God, that do not stand strong, that cannot match the weight of God's glory. That, we'll be, that we will be, we'll be weighed in the, in the scales but we must not be found wanting. But there are things that we have become very attached to. There are things that we have come to, to love and accept and, and live with, even as people of God, that when we put them on and we weigh them by the Word of God, and we weigh them by the Spirit of God, they will be found wanting and they will have to be washed or cleansed out of our lives. See, when the Lord comes, when the glory of the Lord comes, it will change the image of corruption into the image of the incorruptible God. Now, I know I just turned that verse upside down. You might be saying very quickly, well, that's not what that verse says in Romans. But I want you to say that, that the, the converse is true there, that, that when the glory of the Lord comes, it will change the image of that which is corrupt, that which is broken down, that which is wanting, the, will come. And the glory of the Lord will bring and change that. It's not just, not just everything falling apart, but there's a day of rebuilding coming. There's a day when God will establish again His Word and His strength and His glory in His people and in the earth. Do you believe it? Will you believe it today? Will you See through new eyes that God is bringing forth in the earth 
a new move, a new work. For the glory of God, the glory of the Lord opposes the corruption in the earth and replaces it with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. See, it's time to start a rumor, a good rumor. It's time to start a rumor that the church of Jesus is alive and well, and the church that bears his name is a glorious church. And that church is rising up in the earth in new strength, filled with his power, filled with his glory. It's time to start a new rumor. I've heard rumors that are, that are laced with conspiracy theories. And I believe that those things come and they rob people of the truth. They bog people down in the lies and the twistings and, and the musings of men. But it's time for us to start a new rumor that the church of Jesus Christ is alive. The church of Jesus Christ is, is being readied and is being prepared for what God wants to do in the earth. See, the glory of the Lord shall fill this earth. It is now time. Church, arise. See, this chapter, I'm closing with this. This chapter, chapter 2, gives us three promises. I've just gone through two, some a few weeks ago. The first one is that the, the, the righteous man shall live by his faith. We spoke about that. The righteous man shall live by his faith. It's time for faith to arise in the earth and faith to come forth in God's people. Jesus longs to see faith come to the hearts of men and women. Let faith arise in you because you will live by this faith. Real life comes by faith. And then we see here that the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth even as the waters cover the sea this is a glorious day this is this is a great time to be alive believe me this is a great time to be alive and i know that it's been hard on a lot of people i know there's graduates out there that have had to that had to graduate virtually they they couldn't be together these have been very hard things and there's still some more to come it's not over yet but these are the best days of earth. These are the best days of the kingdom of God. Church will we arise. And then finally, the, the very last statement, verse 20 in this, in this chapter, it's a, it's a great statement. I love this. In amidst everything going on, amidst all the trouble in the earth, this statement closes it all. And it says in Habakkuk 2 verse 20, But the Lord is in his holy temple. <laughs> the Lord is in his holy temple. And what does he say there? Let all the earth be silent before him. The Lord is in his temple. Some people say God is still on his throne. That's a good way of putting it. God, the Lord is in his temple. The Lord is in his people. Now, I can, I can really be tempted yet to preach a lot more on this, but the Lord is in his church. He is in his sanctuary. He is in his most holy place. God is present in the earth, in his church, in his people. And there are some nasty things that are being said in this day about the church of Jesus Christ. But I tell you the word of God says here. Yeah, let the earth know this. That the Lord is in his temple. And then let them be silent before him. See this is a day when we come to God. The, um, Psalm 46 verse 10 says. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth the New Living Translation puts it this way be still and know that I am God I will be honored by every nation I will be honored 
throughout the earth. This is the promise. This is the promise amidst the problem. But we can see that God is inserting hope in our day. Hope. Hope. Did you receive hope today? So if you are perplexed in a troubled time, these promises stand sure. God will certainly, most definitely, His glory shall fill the earth. The knowledge of His glory shall fill the earth even as the waters cover the sea. You have to, you have to decide with me whose side you are on. Which side you are on. Where you stand in things. You see, there are only two options. I know we live in a world where we think there are many options. Oh, I can choose anything. I can be anything. I can do anything. But in this case, there are only two options. And these are, yes, there really are only two. You're either on God's side or you're not. I know that seems harsh, but, but that is the truth. You're either on God's side or you're not. Most people want to, to think of God as God being on their side. Yep, God is for you. But it's important that you have to be for God. Be on His side. So you're either there or you're not. So come today. Call on Jesus. He will save you. Everyone. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Would you call on Him today? Would you set your allegiance with Him? Whose glory is about to fill the earth. And when you do, He will change you. He will speak to your heart. He will make alive your spirit. He will put His glory in you so that when you are weighed, you will not be found wanting. But you will be found to measure up to the fullness of the stature of Christ Jesus. See, today is a day when we all get to choose. Believers get to choose. Those of you who have not at this time yet given your allegiance to Christ, you get to choose. But we all get to choose today whose side we are on. Let's pray. And I'll pray for you today. Would you indicate um, in any way a decision that you have made today, a way that you have given to yourself to God, would you come, even as we pray, and surrender and yield to Him? Father, we thank you today, Lord, that you are a good God, that you are weighing us. Lord, not, not as Nebuchadnezzar, so that we would be weighed and and Lord, find destruction. But Lord, you by your grace and your mercy are weighing us today. Lord, that we might discard the structures that destroy us. That we'll discard the things that, that have come and brought about corruption in our lives. Father, that you are bringing us to a place where we will measure up to you, not because of our efforts, not because of our strength, but because of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, that finished work, that complete work, Lord, that you are doing in the earth today. Lord, would you keep doing it in us? Would you do it again in us? Lord, that we might be filled as individuals with your glory, so that this earth may be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And Lord, I thank you that you are in your temple. Let all the earth be still before you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.